everyone, welcome back to the Library YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at miniature books. Miniature books have been around since ancient Mesopotamia and you would have seen them more likely on videos that have to do with creating your own miniatures or creative kind of arts and crafts sort of videos rather than library specific ones. Though every library will have their own little set of miniature books and each set is interesting for its own kind of provenance and why they have them. A lot of the times people owned miniatures because they were easy to travel with or they were running away from something. I will link down below a few videos from other libraries around Canada or the United States that feature miniature books. Uh, one of the more famous ones is also uh, kind of books bound inside of a walnut shell or something kind of creative or outside of the normal bounds of a a regular book. So today we're going to take a look at the ones in this collection. One set is from our Victorian book collection and the second is more contemporary books created by contemporary printers and bookbinders. So this box is part of our Rari McLean collection. This is a series of Victorian books. This is something you would probably call macro miniatures because they are larger in size. So this one's about three inches. And these books right here are a collection of Shakespeare's plays. The smaller these books get, the more impressive it is when inside the book you actually have print and type. And you understand that someone actually had to set this really tiny type in order to create something like this. So this here is a portable Hamlet. This is Pericles within the same collection, Julius Caesar. Some of these do have more than one play inside, if the play is shorter, but what's incredible is that it fits within these nine volumes. I am going to move this box away so I could take a look at one at a time. Not surprisingly at all, a lot of prayer books and biblical texts were created in miniature, and I read that sometimes they were made specifically for children, so it could encourage them to not only read biblical texts, but to have their own little copy that is portable, so I think we got this particular copy in 1990, but it's very tiny and the title page is already incredible because it has many lines. It gets really interesting when you also look at the bindings. Now here in this book we have a fold-out image. Some wonderful woodcuts. So here we have Poole's Annual Present and Instruction Pocket Book for Young Ladies and Gentlemen for the year 1820. This is the smallest one I was able to find in the Rory McLean box, so let's take a closer look. This is already cloth very interesting. It feels more like a real book. And this is a Divine Comedy. Oh, very tiny. Some of the pages have not been cut at the top, so you can tell whoever had this had not cut all of the tops, so they're still intact. Yeah, this box seems to have more three-inch books, and this is probably the tiniest one. And this is the biggest one in the box, which is the Book of Psalms. And just for scale, or for comparison, this is a regular duodecimo, so you can understand just how small it gets. So what we have here is a box with many layers of miniature books, and this is it being organized. When it first arrived, it came all in this box over here, just a wooden box, and all of the books were just crammed in there. Uh, the box was supposed to, there were how many, how many books were there, a hundred or so? Little, little tiny, little tiny and, and, and medium, almost mediums, a few of them, but uh, there was a wide variety of thicknesses and shapes and sizes of, of books from this collection from Will Ruder. So, what to do? So. I suggested that we make a box that um, would be created in layers, and um, so there was, there's five trays in the end, and uh, 
there's one with, uh, and I didn't, uh -oh, I didn't sort the books out except in a way of that, that would allow me to get maximum number of books into a tray. Uh, but we um, started off with uh, cutting out the cutting out the board for um, for the different thicknesses. Some of the trays have different thicknesses than others, different depths. And the dividers, and and then it became a matter of covering. So then we so it seemed like we had some black cloth lying around, so we used that and um, covered covered each tray. Here comes another one. Now, have you ever made anything like this before, Don? Uh, not exactly like this before. No, it's true. I have made things where, where you you have layers of stuff, but never never five layers. <laughs> never never had occasion to do that. But uh, it was pretty much the same principle. You you make five identical boxes with the divisions, however they needed to be, and then you um, made a, a larger box big enough to hold everything. So. And this was custom made, so this was for this particular collection. But have you ever had to make anything that was just more standard for like regular books? Um, in, in, in this kind of layered way? Yeah. Not really. No, no. It's pretty, pretty unusual. How many hours did this take? Oh, too many. <laughs> A lot. Um, I would say uh, I, I can't really remember how many, you know, sessions I did work on it, but probably 15 hours, I, I, I would think, easily. Have you ever seen a, um, a creative or interesting way to store miniatures elsewhere? Uh, the, the kind of standard way to do it is to make a, is to make a, a say you've got a book, say you've got a book this size and you want to store it in a box of its own. Uh, then you would make a you would make a box make the box a manageable size so say twice as big as this and uh, then you would have a little a little well in the in the uh, inside of the the base of the box that would hold that would house this securely and then of course you'd have a lid on the box that would close and then the whole thing would look like an ordinary clamshell style box uh, that you could put on a shelf and label and that kind of stuff. And so, so I've definitely done that for, for smaller books. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Now, these books were donated by Will Ruder of Alaquando Press, but he himself did not make these. This, these are collected by him, and they're books created by other people, other printers, other book binders. Some of them, like this one over here, is actually loose and not bound, but it's inside a little pouch. And you can see the work of the printer on this little. And the next shelf, we get even tinier books. So, well, I really want to spend a long time on this particular shelf because here we have the big Stevens Mammoth ABC, and Steven is our own lead printer or lead printer as he likes to joke, uh, of Stiff and Sore Press, and you would have met him in a previous video as well, in the introduction to the bib room, and he printed this at home. Um, so obviously Will collected this and put it in his collection. Very cool. This teeny tiny book is the... Um, pretty much one one inch and maybe one and a half now this one has not been printed inside no no type has been set for this miniature however there is a little drawing so this is a miniature book of the Gospels in Maori in 1965 and it was printed in Germany. But what's impressive is that here we have not only, you know, woodcuts and really teeny tiny type, but it's actually legible. Almost to the point where it's a blur, at least for me. But if you were really dedicated and committed and had one of those fancy monocles, I think you might be able to read this on the go. And it would be very, very portable. Again, we're looking at barely two inches.
Another fun one is this one, and this is where somebody tried to pretend to be a bookbinder with a $1 bill, American, and create this little bead here as an opening. And this one opens up like a drawer. Anything for a buck. It would be really funny if this was sold for less than a dollar. So here we have here we have Ode to a Nightingale by Keats. And it has even a little box. It is beautifully printed. We had to organize this by donor because that's how our collection is organized in general. So this box will contain books that are not only contemporary, as in like a few years ago, but it also has very old books that, that are either leather, and you can see here the wood chips. Um, so this is very, very old. This is probably closer to three inches. And this is from 1799. We have this very elaborate library. But once again, it's been printed. And the details on the woodcuts are really impressive for just how tiny they are. They're a lot bigger, but I am going to just leave this as is. And if anyone wants to come in and see them, you are more than welcome to. That's it. Thank you all very much for joining us today. And I will see you in a future video. Bye.